Thank you very much, Rene. I mean it. You know, being the best, if I look in the mirror, I go very close, I see only my face, then that is the whole world. If I go even closer, I see only the, pimp, the pimple. <laughs> <laughs> so being the best, I don't know what to say about it. And it's, it's, I want to be a good farmer. Actually, sometimes I have a problem being a good farmer because being a farmer is trying to control the first, the first spade we put in earth to turn the soil is a try, is you know, in a way, trying to control nature. But it makes no sense because even if you are trying to to uh, radically change the nature, we are still the part of nature, and that that is one thing we have to think very carefully about. This morning, I I drove to this place, uh, passing on the motorway, in the middle. I see a lot of asparagus. <laughs> Later, it was this uh, sea bogton at Ama, really a lot. And almost being here, I see I see ho horseradish rampion. Just before before the DR building, the Danish television, and and you, we can go and grab it. Then I thought, why why are these asparagus? living in the middle of the motor road. But the other question is also, what is the motorway doing where asparagus is growing? <laughs> <laughs> I want to present myself, uh, but first of all, I'm, I'm feeling very humble. You can hear my, my voice is staggering a little bit, uh, but, but I feel comfortable feel very comfortable, I feel very proud also, humble and proud. I want you to help me feel more comfortable by giving me a big smile. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I looked at myself today in the mirror, I smiled, and what did I see? I see no carnivore teeth. See, only teeth for smashing something. Why do we eat so much meat? At least decayed meat is what is fit for a teeth. Not, not to go and kill an animal and eat it like that. We are no wolf, we are no nothing like that. We are meant to eat plants and insects. And uh, when I was young, I lived in Lammefjord, uh, 80 kilometers from here. I had a friend called Kurt. He's, he was my age and we dug a lot of holes in the ground and the water came up and we could make the water run to other places. And we went around in the landscape, our home, our universe was perhaps 50 hectares or something like that. Not very big, but it, it was our universe. And we found we knew some plant we could eat. We didn't know anything uh, if they could harm us or anything, but there were some sour ones, there were some bitter ones. I know now which plants they are, but everything was very physical. It was big, fun, digging thing in the ground, trying to eat it. I never ate soil. You can, according to uh, Nadi Sawa. I can, but <laughs> I won't. <laughs> because I have the idea that everything we eat has been alive. We're not plants. Plants can actually consume themselves by uh, uh, products like nitrogen, like uh, minerals. But we can't. We have to have something which has been living before. We are, we are very weak in, 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 in respect to life. We have to get some other starting life for us before we can live ourselves. And that's also a good point for me. But playing around with Kurt, we also make a lot of jokes like any child do. We found out that eggs were very nice to eat. 
and even duck eggs also were very good to eat, but they look beautiful on a big white wall. And we, we, we didn't know that we, we did something wrong, but we did. And we found out in our back that time it was uh, allowed to, <laughs> to give some punishment. <laughs> uh, maybe I had taken some severe damage, I don't know. But, <laughs> but later, later, my friend Kurt uh, and me was not playing together. I got another friend called Finn. And uh, we were 12 years about that age old. And some other guys, same age, they were more quick to find out about the relations to girls and like that. But Finn and me, we made our own route around the local uh, small village in autumn, uh, September, October. We knew exactly where the good plum tree was and when they were ripe. And we had our own route through the gardens and we never got caught. <laughs> and we came back three, four years, the same route. And that's how it is about stories. They have to be uh, continued, you have to be told again. And it, actually, I would love to go that route again and see if the plum tree, if the wine, if the grape, grape uh, just plastered on the south wall, the good apple trees, everything where it was today. I think a lot of, a lot of it has uh, disappeared, but could be a joke to find out. Later, I, I uh, wanted to see the world. I wanted to see something exotic. We're always driven by exotics. I traveled a lot in North Africa. Actually, over here in, in, uh, in the food market, I saw two, uh, two young guys from uh, Lebanon, and they stand there making good pancakes filled with uh, vegetables, of course. And they used what they in Arab call full. And I thought, oh my god, it's many years ago. Actually, full or fev or uh, horse bean was my first exotic challenge. I took some beans from Tunisia, planted them in my uh, home, and they grew very well. And after that, it has been a big thing, carrying thing, to see if they could grow in my garden. Something failed, something succeeded. A lot, actually, a lot of things succeed. Uh, and I, all of a sudden, I thought this planting things is very funny. But uh, I remember my childhood. One of the favorite things in my childhood was carrots and asparagus. And uh, my connection with carrots and asparagus was, as all the other thing, very physical. We were, I think I'm, I'm one of the last persons who would take up carrots uh, in, the late, in the late 70s. After that, machinery uh, took over and, and uh, but I really miss that. Feeling your body uh, as part of harvesting something, that's really good. And at that time, I decided I want to do something like that in my, in my future. So I, as, as a part of that, I started growing uh, asparagus. And I soon found out, because that was my first prof professional step into producing uh, vegetable, I found out that a lot of other things is growing as well as the asparagus. But I knew that from my childhood, I had to weed things out. I had to take, I had to control the balance between nature and, let's call it culture. But it's still nature. Doesn't matter. We have to think about it. It's the same. And we are not stronger than this nature. With this asparagus, uh, there was this, I saw before that uh, the Kenopodium plant was mentioned, and, and uh, 
That was my first wild plant. Uh, the other one, which was uh, wild sorrel, I didn't know in my childhood what it was, but <laughs> these, these things came uh, rapidly after, after that. And uh, this was in the start of uh, the 90. And uh, I started playing again a little bit. I have a deep respect for, for uh, conventional farming. Uh, I like lines of carrots without any weed. You can discuss how you get rid of the weed, but, but uh, still I think, I think it's beautiful to have a production. Uh, I respect really uh, good farmers. If they are organic or they are, they are doing things with chemical, doesn't matter. They have the same goal. They have the idea of producing very good stuff. And uh, I have deep respect for this fundamentalism in producing uh, vegetable, especially. I think if we talk about producing meat, I have my thoughts about it. <laughs> It's not, not nice always. Uh, so I started, like my father, growing carrots also, uh, with machinery, was another job. And I found out that the better I became doing these carrots, uh, the less was I able to live with it economically. Uh, Actually, in, in the mid of uh, the 90s, I got a very good production with uh, ten, about 10 hectares of carrot. I couldn't even earn what my father did from half a hectare. And everything 10 years before was done by hand. Actually, with, with love and respect, every carrot was taken up, put in a box, taken care by hands, uh, and we got good money for that. What has happened? Uh, now, now, every carrot you see in a supermarket uh, hasn't seen any man. Actually, a no man hasn't seen the carrot. <laughs> <laughs> because every carrot get taken a picture in the machine, and if this carrot has a pimple, out. Nobody cares the taste of the carrot. Where's that? Everybody says that a carrot has to be sweet. It's a funny thing. I have uh, four children, and I've been experimenting with my children. <laughs> <laughs> I take uh, <laughs> seven different kind of <coughs> carrots, big bunches, take them up to the school. Even the school are involved. <laughs> and uh, I give them white carrots, I give them yellow carrots, uh, I give them blue carrots, round carrots. Everybody thinks which is the best carrot. They would all scream, the sweetest! No. They want the white carrot without any carotene, which is good for their skin and their health and everything. <laughs> they, want the, they want the white carrot, always. Because it's juicy, it's crispy, but it's not sweet. That's very, I think that's very funny. I've been to a meeting with a big chef from uh, the supermarket, uh, which told us, you have in this place, Lamefjord, to make a sweet carrot because what we sell is the children buying. The children is designing what the parents put in the basket. It's not true. And it's funny. <laughs> and I've, I've been, children is so inspiring. Uh, I've seen, I've seen, uh, the same school, my children's school. I went up there, have a big banquet with all my vegetables, and uh, we had a little start, start up uh, talking about vegetable. 
And I asked if anybody had something to say about Westerbo. Then all things came. And that's the way we are thinking. If you have to say something, you have to say something negative. My father don't like any kind of vegetable. <laughs> my father also, everybody, nobody has a father who likes vegetable. <laughs> then I think, oh, what a potential. Here is something to change. And then a guy, he was, because it's easy to tell that other don't like. I don't, I hate vegetable. <laughs> it was Simon. <laughs> I come back to Simon. We had this uh, talk about, and I, I, I can't stop if I see something good. And I think many of my vegetables are very good. I can't stop putting them in, in my mouth, even if there's sand or anything. A little bit shit, uh, doesn't matter. Uh, and after after the session, after the session, uh, I allowed the children to come up if they want to grab. I don't know what they wanted to use it because nobody likes vegetable, but they came and took all. And this girl who started, my father hate, don't like anything vegetable. She took all the celery. <laughs> and uh, after a while, Simon came to me just very excited with a big beetroot, red beetroot, like this huge, just like he win the lottery. <laughs> and then he said, the biggest thing I ever heard, uh, it's my biggest victory. Son, you know what? I love red beetroots. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it was amazing. Because I think he never met a big beetroot before. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to tell him that actually I didn't like to grab them like that. <laughs> uh, I want, I have three, something that's also a little bit about how I feel. I have to have something solid. And I feel a little bit like clumsy hands with this, but I think that's okay. I think we take that one first here. These cling together. If I do it quickly like this, shit and Organic matter, <coughs> decay, everything, but, but decay is part of life. And uh, this, is, this is the second plant that inspires me the most. Uh, anybody know what it is? It's leeks some kind of strange onion. I always uh, been educated as a farmer that leek should be 40 centimeter, having about one third to half of the leek being white, the rest green. I don't know why you have to have the green because uh, I once had a young farmer helping me and then I just told him to make uh, 500 bundles with uh, five leek in each bundle. And then I came home and he just <laughs> made 500 bundles with only the white. He cut all, all the green. He said, what the hell? You spoiled 500 bundles for what? Oh, no, but, but when, I come, when my mother takes a uh, leek home, she just cut the green and sh out with it. You can't use the green from the leek. I see many, actually I see in many restaurants they do the same. Two, one, just cut the green out. Okay. 
but more and more like Rene that <laughs> used the, the green one also. But it's a shame to produce a vegetable and people are just throwing half of it, which should be very, very good. But uh, then this story about leak started for me uh, 10 years ago. I, uh, I was getting divorced like 80% uh, of people in Denmark does. <laughs> uh, and I had a lot of problem, of course. Uh, Do I need to this on? And then I forgot to I to to, to sow the leeks in the, in the springtime in August, which is normally the time you are planting or sowing uh, leek. But uh, I had this packet of seeds. Then I thought uh, I had a good summer, so I got a little bit more energy. Why don't mm -hmm. I put it in the soil? You can see what happened. Then mm -hmm. they, they started germinating and they were very, 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 very tiny. Like, like this in October. I thought, ah, they get, they get all killed in winter. But next year, they developed, came like small, very nice leaks in, in uh, April. And actually, there was some chefs in Copenhagen. Actually, they want they want to have this because they think they were very nice, uh, just like uh, spring onions. And then I thought, okay. And and uh, there was a lot. Actually, uh, there was for one hectare leak. So I just took some and and then uh, at the end of the period, I saw some some. Some was growing up, making a stem, making some flowers, but there were other, they didn't do anything. And then I took them and I found out that they made, like this one, they made a small onion. And, and more of that, they put small onion beside so actually, I thought, what is this? This is a milking, milking machine. So they started growing up next autumn with a lot of new small leeks. And next year, I could grab the leeks and the small onion. They fell off in the soil. So this field, I have been growing uh, leek for eight years now, just taking the leek and they're replanting themselves every year. What a gift for a poor farmer. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and the funny thing, the funny thing, then I, then I started playing. Like and I had some playmates. Like childhood again. I had some playmates. This one actually is the eighth eight genera generation of uh, leek. You see the small, the small things here? It's uh, what's it called? Uh, field salad, field salad, field uh, salad. Mush. mush, mush, yeah, mush. Because with the leeks, in case it failed with the leek, I planted some mush. <laughs> then I had at least that in the summer. But that has been coming eight years as well. So now they live together there. But but now this year I s I stopped the joke with that one. I'm making a new field, of course, because. Uh, it's a funny thing. And, and I think, actually, it's so beautiful. And, and uh, So you're saying this that, that this here has been eight years in the making? Yeah, it's a, a very good thing with leaks. A very strong thing uh, is that it has vegetative production and it has sexual behavior also. And, and the sexual thing comes from from these flowers, there's male and female flowers, and, and they uh, make sex together. It's funny for the bees. Uh, and this looks like sex also, but it isn't. <laughs> <laughs> are, you are you dreaming right now? <laughs> so when, actually, I caught it's sexual behavior because that's some filthy thing. Then you start developing 
on the vegetable process. And that's funny. That's, yeah, you treat somebody bad, then they give you back. And, and uh, there's so many, there's so many uh, different shape of leaks. And this is where people like Rene comes in. Because this one, if I take, yeah, let's take this one, it looks like shit. <laughs> we like shit. After this event, we will all really love shit. I have to take my glasses off. <laughs> you, see, you see here, if we look thoroughly through the shit, what do we see here? Small bulbs. Yeah. Small. Almost like onion gra grains like. of rice, almost. Onion-like creatures. And if we grab, if we grab this one, you clean it a little bit and put it on a plate. That's a masterpiece. Hmm. I think 10 of René couldn't do that even if they worked for the months with the molecular uh, kitchen. Yeah. Well, without people like you, we wouldn't even have it. No, but it's not me. I, I, just, I just saw it first. <laughs> So this is like uh, almost like a and the color, the color, everything, even try to eat it. We eat shit. It was you who told that once. <laughs> uh, yeah, all of, all that about leak. I need somebody to clean up me sometime. We will. Don't worry. Don't worry. <laughs> yes. We got people. Another thing. Which this is uh, this is my favorite. This is asparagus. End of season, uh, the last shoots from asparagus. I have I have uh, something dogmatic about my life. I had I have to eat the first asparagus in my field, and I have to eat the last in the season and. Today, the season stopped. Can we give it to fight? Yeah, you can eat it with me. <laughs> I don't know, we can, I can talk a lot about asparagus, but I, I will only say a couple of things, two things maybe. Yeah. Uh, it's one of the most physically, because I love physical uh, work, and I know you do also. Actually, uh, René wouldn't do what he's doing if he wasn't physical. Somebody might think that, that he's a good performer on stage only, but, but it's hard work. I have so deep respect, because these people, in this place, Noma. I came there last year. I'm busy also. But <laughs> I, came, I came there in the night, uh, just half hour after midnight. People working there. I came back in the morning because it was very urgent with some other stuff. I came 6.30. The same people working there. <laughs> that was amazing for me. Mm. I, I thought, ah, they sleep until 12 o'clock maybe. <laughs> But they don't, and it's hard work to gain whatever you want in your life. And and I like I like and respect other people who uh, I, I like to have play playmates uh, who do the same thing like that. Who who are really convinced that doing an effort is how you reach the goal. Uh, but this this asparagus, I had to find out about this asparagus because. Uh, what, what, how did it start? It? So I, I, I tried to read a lot of, about asparagus, and actually I found out, if anybody knows better, uh, they have to correct me, but the first use of asparagus actually was a root in China. Uh, and it was used as a medical herb. And uh, they used the roots uh, as a condiment for, for kidney disease and stuff like that. 
and I try to eat these uh, these uh, roots. That's still a challenge for the cooks. Nobody found out how to get the string in the middle of the root out. <laughs> but you can make an excellent soup. Actually, you can make the best asparagus soup from the root of asparagus. Uh, and it's it's because it's it's, it's so concentrated that the this as asparagus acid and all the other stuffs. Uh, it's so concentrated in the roots. So also about about this, I'll, I'll make a lot of uh, uh, occasion where people come and talk about asparagus. I tell about asparagus, and and uh, I got a beer company. Uh, so giving good for your kidney. Then it was just the next step to make a beer from the root from of, from asparagus, and actually. You can find it in the tent with the beer and the bread and uh, stuff over that. And I think it's, it has been very funny to work with the bitter stuff in, in uh, asparagus root and making a beer. And it really makes a trigger for you because uh, it's not easy. This year it was a success brewing this beer, so uh, we are digging up the roots. Actually, we are using a big caterpillar. Because if you know how asparagus root go two meter, two and a half meter down in, in, in uh, the soil, then you have to have a caterpillar. <laughs> uh, even if I like physic physical work, it's too much. But uh, we took, normally we take it in, in March, and this year the beer brew was excellent from asparagus root. And then we have to remake. Uh, because everything was sold out already in the middle of, uh, of May. And we came to, to dig some more out, but at that time, asparagus was growing. And the brew became totally different from the other one. And that was really a big fun. So, and that's, that's again, we, we try we can do it after a recipe. But we can't. We have to. We have to uh, follow nature. Uh, often, sometimes, also, if we make some really good stuff. I. Um, I'm gonna cut in. Yeah. Cut in. Uh, and I would just like to tell, uh, especially for all the chefs. The next time you pick up the phone and call your pur your purveyor. Imagine what you can get out if you go straight to the source. What haven't we learned here in now 40 minutes of lecturing from this person? But thank you to Saren. We want to remind about the photograph. I want, can I and yeah. the speakers coming up to answer questions and that they should tweet. I want, yeah. want to say, in relation to this, because uh, I plan to talk about playmates, and having playmates like Rene and a lot of other cooks uh, gives me yeah. great, great pleasure. Great. And Molly. they make me good by speaking good to me. They make me good because they re respect I'm a farmer, like they respect other farmers. I think that's how we get good products. Because if anybody tell me that I'm doing something good and they clap my shoulders, why shouldn't I make it even better next time instead of just uh, bothering me with two big prices and, and uh, <laughs> it's not fit for food <laughs> or anything. So thank you, Rene, also. Oh, thank you, man. It's a fun to be part of this game. <laughs> <laughs> Woo!